So this week, we're going to continue on talking about takeoff and landing. So I know this is um, perhaps you need to kind of like prove when you do your flight sims uh, assignment. Uh, I didn't really see whether you need to uh, need to investigate landing and take off, but obviously when your model is assessed and obviously it will be assessed starting from takeoff if your model uh, whatever the aircraft model that you are developing uh, obviously it need to be able to to take off and obviously if uh, someone wants to also to assess your landing performance of your model so, so should be your model should be able to to do some sort of a proper landing okay right so um <clears throat> Now, uh, I know that you have also done some aircraft design. Now, you know that we have already developed, most of you have already developed the uh, constraint analysis. Now, one or two uh, items in constraint analysis in your charts is obviously <clears throat> the takeoff chart and also the landing chart. So in terms of design, uh, we try to aim at thrust loading and wing loading but later on, if you, you would notice, hopefully by looking at the equations of takeoff and landing, it's quite of the opposite. So, but it doesn't mean that <clears throat> uh, takeoff and landing are not important. So they are also very important one. But sometimes uh, when you look at the design of aircraft, you try to optimize your aircraft in the most kind of like, um, we call it design point. Uh, I think I've already mentioned this a few times already. We try to optimize that in the in the most crucial part of your of your flight. In this case, if you want to optimize in terms of uh, fuel efficiency, obviously we try to optimize it during the cruise, which is the cruise is the longest flight phase uh, in your overall uh, mission flight mission, which is from land uh, takeoff, climb, second climb perhaps, and then cruise, descent, approach, and then and then landing. Okay. So uh, we try, although you try to optimize it during cruise, but when you do your um, concern analysis chart, obviously in your aircraft design, you also include the chart of takeoff and landing. If you meet all of those, it's very <clears throat> uh, obvious that we could say that your performance that you choose in terms of wing loading, thrust loading, meet the flight paces of takeoff and landing. But uh, in here, I mentioned about a good performance in takeoff and landing within a certain length of runway is different than designed for good performance in cruise flight. That's what I meant in, in my statement that normally if you look at the, for example, like wing loading uh, on thrust loading in aircraft design, I always mentioned that the if you've got your constraint analysis charts already, then what you we usually try to aim is the first priority is just to make it your thrust loading as low as possible. And then in this case, the second priority is to make your wing loading as high as possible. So in your, <clears throat> if you have like your, uh, if I could just draw slightly in your, uh, sorry about that, I never cut the line clear for. So you try to make it as the thrust loading as low as possible and your wing loading as high as possible. Now obviously in here, uh, later on, you will see that the takeoff and landing performance usually quite the opposite of that because obviously, if you want your uh, landing field as short as possible, or takeoff field, or takeoff runway, or takeoff length uh, as uh, shorter as possible, then you understand that what you aim is the weight is as low as possible. Right? Is 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 quite the opposite. Now, in terms of defi uh, definitions, uh, I think this is about the, just the common terms that people use um, when when actually you you know you could say that you are your aircraft uh, took off is obviously for example like when the landing gear leaves the ground, which is quite obvious. It means that you have already airborne. Then that means that you have already done your takeoff. But of course, in the, uh, you know the official kind of like definitions of takeoff is that when your aircraft's making a ground run on the runway, starting from standstill, like V equals north, 
I mean, the your aircraft air speed is equal to zero. It's still on a, a right, uh, stay, uh, stand still at the end of the runway. And then uh, start making a ground run, accelerate, and then it's obviously uh, rotate and then a lift off. Uh, and then it will be considered as you have done your takeoff or your takeoff phase, the whole takeoff phase after you uh, already pass what we call it a screen height. Screen height here for a big airplane such as well what you are designing or even a bigger one, the screen height is 35 uh, uh, feet here. Um, <clears throat> but of course, if you're talking about Cessna or, or small airplane, uh, below 5,700 uh, kilograms, usually the screen height is considered as higher, which is about 50 feet. Okay. Now, uh, that is in the in in terms of 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 course uh, in terms of flight performance or flight mechanics. Then the second definition is the one that we're trying to try to establish here. Uh, of course, in uh, layman term. When you've done your takeoff, it means like after you've done the climb and then you already retracted, uh, you know, your landing gear and, and make the flaps is also <clears throat> retracted, then you are considered as uh, as done your takeoff. But obviously, the one that we try to uh, uh, discuss here is obviously the second one when, when the aircraft is at 30 feet of elevation above ground. And then um, uh, that is what we call it as your you've done your takeoff phase. So when you do the, you know, flight phases, you, you know, the takeoff, climb, first climb, second climb, and um, uh, cruise and so on. Takeoff phase is what, what after you start from the ground run up to 35 feet. I think uh, we got the uh, picture here. Uh, for example, this is what we call it the whole distance of takeoff. In this case, after you achieve of 35 uh, feet uh, screen height. Okay, now there will be a few uh, terms in terms of uh, the velocity. We're going to discuss about that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of velocity uh, terminologies in, in 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 aviation, especially in aircraft design, aircraft performance, even in CS25, the the standard documents. Uh, more than 46, I think, 45, uh, deficient in term. If, if you've already read uh, CS25, there's a lot of velocity, PMCG, PMCA, PM, PMD, uh, VMO, and the maximum operations, and so on. MCG, minimum control on the ground. Uh, MCA, minimum control in the air. <clears throat> now, in, in takeoff phase itself, we have a few uh, velocity uh, terminologies, a few uh velocity notations uh which we're going to discuss <clears throat> hopefully uh, one by one uh in this in the sessions now you you have seen that already on on these pictures anyway uh there's a well this is when you are uh, stand still uh at the end of the runway and then when you are making uh sorry I making a, a ground run with the accelerations uh, from left to right, and then obviously at some point you have to uh, make your aircraft nose up. Uh, this is what we call it uh, rotate. And usually, if uh, if you look at the, uh, um, if you are in the cockpit and then you see there's a good coordination between pilot and copilot, you know, pilot in command and then pilot in monitor. One pilot will monitor the speed, and then usually <clears throat> they call it out like uh, uh, rotate and then a uh, positive climb and so on. Um, hopefully I could, I could play some video uh, in the tutorial sessions uh, during tutorial this week, you could see it. And there is a position where you could rotate your aircraft that when this, your uh, nose landing gear start to, you know, uh, lift off, you know, uh, airborne, this is when we call it a rotate. And then one, all the landing gears, uh, the main and uh, nose landing gear and main landing gears already no longer touching the ground. This is what we call it a lift off. Okay, so you, I hope you understand the difference between uh, uh, rotate and lift off. Uh, rotate is when your nose landing gear start to, uh, you know, uh, leaving the ground. Uh, and then when the whole complete uh, landing gears, uh, both nose landing gear and main landing gear, uh, no longer touching the ground. This is what we call it a lift up. And then, of course, 
you have to pass the screen height by definition from the regulation. Uh, the screen height is 35 uh, feet. This is obviously uh, been defined due to the terrain obstacles surrounding your runway, surrounding your airport. Uh, and then you start to make a, a positive climb. Obviously, you are not allowed to make any more uh, the, the, uh, you know, decreasing in flight paths, then you have to continue to climb. And then obviously there is a condition where your uh, aircraft uh, have to achieve uh, at a certain uh, altitude. I think I put it in the next um, uh, slide, for example, like 1,500 feet. But of course, this is not completely uh, constraining in all airports, uh, for example, like Heathrow, they are very strict in this kind of like uh, uh, attitude for your aircraft to make a constant, uh, the constant, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, initial uh, level, uh, level flight. Uh, I think I, I better put my, um, um, my camera on so I can, I can talk about that on my camera. I hope you can see me okay. I'll bring my aircraft here. So uh, usually uh, the uh, aircraft uh, making uh, 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 after climb, and usually uh, in some airport, you are allowed to stay level for a while before you make uh, another, before you make another second climb. That's why there is the two uh, definitions about first climb, and then make a flight level for about a couple of minutes. And then another second climb uh, where you then reach your uh, top of uh, top of climb. We call it when you start making your long uh, cruise or long uh, level flight, right? So either thirty-five thousand uh, feet, thirty-five thousand feet, sorry, or uh, a small aircraft that could do it in like a lower uh, flight altitude, in what twenty-nine thousand feet or even twenty-four or twenty-five thousand feet. Okay. Now <clears throat> this uh, actually. Um, um uh, uh if i could just uh put it back um then this is uh, actually what um uh, the uh, definition comes to when to an altitude but of course as i said at heathrow you're not allowed anymore to do that because for obvious reasons for the environment because you make a noise uh, there's a lot of big city a lot of complaint about noise at Heathrow, then usually after takeoff, you are uh, strictly asked to really to make a continuous climb until out of the terminal area is about 10,000 feet or something. So no longer about 1,500 feet. For a small aircraft, yes, but no, no, I don't think small aircraft are allowed now uh, to uh, fly from Heathrow, I mean, to take off from Heathrow. Uh, but for a standard Heathrow airport, for a standard aircraft that fly from Heathrow uh, on and off. And obviously, um, you have to, uh, well, you are asked to go uh, very uh, high uh, climb uh, altitude, which is about 10,000 feet or so, 6,000 or 10,000 feet. Now, uh, in summary, obviously, the uh, ground run uh, phase, uh, if you look at the, um, what's it called, the pictures on the on previous, um, uh, on previous uh, slide, um, just to make sure that whether I I, I uh, record it. Yes. Um, uh, on the slide before that, you see that there are three paces of uh, of ground run. Uh, we call it, uh, well uh, a pace of takeoff. Sorry. The first is ground run when you start uh, start from when your uh, aircraft stands still, uh, p equals zero, and then you make an acceleration until uh, a rotate if i could just go back to this um, uh, uh, picture again so this is uh, the first uh, phase uh, uh, and then the second phase when you try to do uh, uh, rotate and lift off and then this uh, the third phase is after you then goes to uh, a certain altitude uh, for your climb okay so we call it airborne and then that's where um, uh, your speed becomes uh, a different type of speed, which we're going to discuss it uh, later on, hopefully. Um, now, uh, obviously, uh, there is a thing that related to what we discussed earlier about the different aircraft performance within you going to cruise and 
when you're doing a cruise and you're, do, uh, you're doing a ground round or, or takeoff or even landing, uh, which is the ground effect. Now, the ground effect is kind of like give the opposite way uh, what you have in uh, cruise. Uh, this is just a, a simple um, explanation why uh, actually the performance that we are looking at at cruise is completely the opposite from the uh, performance that we try to uh, optimize uh, during takeoff or landing. One of them is what we call the ground effect. Now, remember, when we talk about cruise, uh, we try to aim to make uh, induced drag as low as possible. Induced drag due to the fact that there is a vortex uh, uh, induced drag from the wing tip of your uh, uh, wing. Now in landing, oh, sorry, in takeoff or landing even, uh, then that vortex, uh, you know, during on the wingtip is kind of like suppressed because of the different, uh, well, because of the, the short diff, uh, distance between your wing and the ground that will suppress the, the wing vortex uh, coming uh, from the bottom part of your wing to the uh, uh, top part of your wing. So if you remember that we talk about that, if I could just draw it nicely of your wing here, this is your uh, fuselage of your aircraft, for example, um, then um, uh, there is a wing vortex coming uh, from uh, top of the wing, sorry, bottom of the wing, this is your, another part of your wing there, uh, coming and then uh, this is what we call it, Indus drag, right? The drag caused by this, and then usually we try to sort of suppress that, minimize that. That is part of the KCL square from your uh, uh, drag polar. And then usually we try to make that uh, because K is basically uh, none other than pi Oswald efficiency multiplied by aspect ratio. We try to say that if you want to make that K as small as possible. Uh, to make this industry track as small as possible, then usually we tend to make the aspect ratio quite high. Uh, but in here, because the vortex uh, industry track, because of this suppressed slightly, now having this uh, aspect ratio uh, big is completely quite, uh, give the uh, opposite uh, effect to the, to the performance of the, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, takeoff performance, sorry. So that's why it says with the reduced downwards, there's a less in this track, uh, sp speed increase as a consequence, also the total lift force increase. So in simple term, ground effect give a cushions of your, air, of, of your air under the airplane. So then the ground effect may reduce uh, the stall speed, which is obviously a good. So you want to have your stall speed as low as possible. Remember the stall speed is um, uh, square root of 2w uh, rho s cl max, remember that. So if you make this um, uh, stall speed uh, uh, low, then you could make the cl max uh, even higher. And then you could also um, uh, make the weight, uh, well, we're talking about weight over s here. Uh, your wing loading is also even smaller rather than bigger. Remember, then we talk about the constraint analysis, we try to make W over S bigger, but of course, it, what we want to have here is your stall speed is smaller than the W over S is, is also smaller. You want to make that uh, small. Okay, so that is the uh, quite the opposite uh, uh, effect uh, when we talk about uh, um, uh, cruise performance and, and takeoff performance. Obviously, your constraint analysis should give you a balance between those uh, those two uh, design parameters. Okay. Now, um, there is a, a few uh, definition that I'm going to talk slightly in uh, at the same time. First of all, is the velocity definitions that I, I talked before already. I mentioned about the uh, rotate velocity, VR, uh, lift off velocity uh, of V1 and V2 uh, subsequently. Uh, and then obviously there is another uh, parameters that you probably, if you look at the CS25 or the standards, uh, there is about the, um, uh, they call it, uh, sorry, I thought my fans are on. 
okay? So uh, the acceleration stop distance required, right? And then there's also a takeoff distance required. Perhaps you have seen it already. And by default, then your runway has to provide this kind of like distance, right? So if you uh, take off from Heathrow or from London City, that runway have to meet these two uh, definition here. In, in airport terms, this is obviously the availability of the length of runway. Uh, and then of course, of course uh, in this case, they change the R into A, which is the available, right? So in, in if you look at the runway um, specification of Heathrow or, or London City, rather than calling it uh, ESDR or TODR, they call it uh, acceleration, acceleration stop or acceleration, accelerate stop distance available. And of course, for takeoff, they call it takeoff distance available. Okay, so you probably have seen this uh, if you look at or open the specification of Heathrow, uh, you know, a London City or any airports. This is something that they could provide for you. But of course, in terms of aircraft performance uh, for takeoff and landing, this is what actually definition of your uh, of your aircraft. Uh, we're going to talk about that now. I'm going to uh, you could read this obviously uh, in your own time, but I'm going to jump into the next slide, uh, which I'm going to talk uh, one by one from this. I, I'm going to start from the bottom one here uh, first. Here now, <clears throat> as a pilot, usually you have three different questions if you want to uh, you know, make your aircraft, well, conduct a takeoff of your aircraft. These three basic questions actually related to what we talked earlier about the uh, you know, distance requirements for, for every condition. Now, the first question obviously is very simple, which, which is the, the, the bottom uh, picture there, which is as a pilot, when you start already waiting in the end of runway, the first question is that you want to ask, okay, could I bring my aircraft here to make a ground run and lift off and lift it off uh, by the end of a runway to go, uh, to go over a screen height of 35 feet, right? Remember the screen height is 35 feet uh, here uh, with still an extra, because this is part of the regulation as well, an extra 15% of margin uh, of runway space available, okay? That is the first question, right? So that's why then this is what we call it a uh, uh, takeoff distance uh, requirement or takeoff distance required, okay? And then obviously, if you try to uh, take off from any airport, that takeoff distance available has to be bigger than takeoff distance required. So remember that we talk about TODA and TODR. So takeoff distance available has to be bigger than takeoff distance required. So if you could prove that your takeoff distance required of your aircraft is smaller than what is available, for example, at Heathrow or at London City or any airport, then yes, you could. I mean, to answer that question, yes, I could bring my aircraft to make a ground run and lift it off by the end of runway to go over a screen height of 35 feet with still an extra 15% of runway space available. Okay, that is the first question. The second question, if you look at the second uh, picture there, could I bring my aircraft to a complete stop within the runway length available uh, if something happened, right? Uh, what is the classic example of something happened? Obviously, the classic example is if your engine failed, one engine failed. Okay, could I then make it at some point, make it decelerate, slam the brake, reduce the obviously the power, and then make it a complete stop within what we have already, which is this, right? So within this, that I could make it a complete stop without hitting the airport building, for example or any trees or, or any bushes by the end of the runway, or even I think at Heathrow, uh, the end of the runway is M4, you know, the motorway. Um, so can I make that, uh, 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 you know, can, could I bring that aircraft to complete stop? Then obviously we have to deal with that uh, in a way that, for example, the, 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 the one engine is, is failed. 
Now, the third scenario or the third question is, if I decide to make a, a, a still conduct a takeoff or perform a takeoff, the next question is, could I bring my aircraft to make an adequate acceleration if something happens on my engine, for example, adequate acceleration and to lift my aircraft off the ground and go over that screen, uh, 35 feet screen height and with one engine within the runway length available. Again, if I draw that line up here, that runway should be, uh, you know, the, your takeoff with one engine operation uh, inoperative, uh, then you still have to pass the 35 uh, feet uh, screen height, then still make a positive climb. Uh, in this case, a constant uh, speed, okay? Now, this is the questions you have to ask as a pilot. And of course, if you are, if you design an aircraft, then you have to also to answer that within the aircraft performance of your, of your aircraft. Okay, now the question here, what is then the balance fit length in here? Now the balance fit length, if I could just bring my uh, whiteboard, I hope I could do that within seconds. As I try to do that, is that right? Um, I think I will I'll sh mix that later, but I'm going to go this. This is the pictures of the, um, uh, well, the X axis is your velocity and the Y axis is runway distance or runway length available, or in this case is we're talking about the, something that need uh, to uh, required is runway distance required. Okay, so if a scenario number one, sorry, scenario number two, so no problem with scenario number one, the question number one, if you could do that, then with your engine, all engines on, you could do a make, uh, well, you could make a takeoff with 35 uh, feet at the end of the runway, a screen height, uh, with the street, still an extra 15% uh, of your runway length. If you could do that, then that is your takeoff performance. Now, if you want to make a complete stop because something happened with your engine, then obviously there is a question here. If at some point, for example, like you, when you accelerate your aircraft at certain point, for example, like uh, at B here, say V, say v uh, A, and what is the distance required for you to make a complete stop. And obviously, if you are still in a very low speed, the deceleration and then the, the length for you to make a complete stop is also quite relatively shorter if you have, if your aircraft is already in a very high uh, uh, speed, for example, if you're already in V, V there. Does that make sense? So if you, I draw the functions between the speed and then your runway distance uh, to stop required. If I could just make it a different color here, then that line is looks like this. Okay. Do you agree with that? So I hope you agree with uh, um, uh, the, uh, the pictures there. Now, what happened with this scenario number two, where you try to still have a go, even your uh, um, engine one engine is an operative is obviously uh, quite the opposite because if you are uh, still uh, in a very low speed like VA here and then you still want to continue to make a ground round and lift off your aircraft to pass the 35 uh, feet screen height and obviously your um, uh, your distance the distance that you need or you require is is quite far okay compared to if you have already in quite high speed, then perhaps when something happened with your engine at that quite high speed and you decide to go still go on until uh, you uh, to make a lift off and then uh, passing st uh, screen height, maybe the distance is, is much, much shorter than if I draw that. Uh, so can I just put this? This is when you try to make a acceleration stop uh, distance, right? But you just make a, a, a note for that. So that is going that way. But if we talk uh, about the takeoff, uh, continue takeoff with one engine operative, 
with that um, um, a condition, obviously, is, as we already discussed, if you have a slow uh, uh, speed and then suddenly your engine is, uh, you know, uh, inoperative, then the distance that you require to, to still continue to climb passing 35 uh, feet height is going to be very high. Let's see if we we'll start from here and it's going to go down like that. You agree with that? So this is when you decide to do a uh, takeoff system. You follow? So I hope that makes sense slightly. And then obviously, uh, whether you want to continue, uh, well, whether you want to decelerate and stop, or whether you want to continue take off with one engine operative. Now you have to do that, obviously, before you reach this point here. You follow? Right? So if you uh, your aircraft uh, ground round, uh, accelerate, uh, your speed increase, and then suddenly you say, oh, one engine in operative uh, because of, you know, the engine uh, failed, and then you decide to go uh, uh, to stop this rate, and obviously you have to, uh, uh, you could do that between this uh, point, or you could just say, okay, let's continue going, then that is where uh, you could also follow the, the green line there, is it green? <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's green, it looks like a rainbow color there. Now this is what we call it decision, well, although decision is quite misleading, decision speed okay so it doesn't mean that you have to decide but that is the point where you could completely stop or continue uh, land so in uh, aviation uh, aviation term this is we call it v1 okay decision speed now what is the distance required for that because it's a balance between your you making a stop or making a takeoff. This is what we call it balance field length. I hope you get the point here. So this is the, the length that you could do the uh, decision speed and then uh, the, the speed between whether you want to make a complete list of your aircraft or you want to continue climb and then, well, continue ground round with one engine and then climb and then uh, make a, a lift off and then passing the 35 feet screen height and then continuous climb with the positive climb rate and positive climb angle or flight path angle uh, with the, <clears throat> uh, within the, the runway, then that is what we uh, say as a um uh well that is what will happen in the third scenario right so all of this obviously have to be within your runway available okay so runway available has to uh, completely uh, meet the requirements of your aircraft in terms of acceleration stop distance so uh, the availability of the acceleration stop distance or the takeoff distance available Remember, because that means that has to be bigger than uh, ES, ESDR, sorry. And then this one should be bigger than takeoff distance required. Okay. So I hope that quite uh, give you some idea what actually um, uh, we talked earlier about the V1 and uh, V2. Uh, so the decision speed, also known as P1, is the speed at which the pilot has to make a choice of taking off or stop in the event of engine failure. Okay. Now uh, there is a routine that the pilot. I'll, I'll show you on the video, hopefully, uh, on the in the uh, what is it uh, tutorial sessions that usually there is a routine from the pilot before P1. Usually the pilot put uh, well pilot or co-pilot put their hands on the thrust lever uh, and then once someone call out either the pilot or pilot we have already reached v1 by starting it out v1 then obviously the pilot take the hands off from the thrust lever just to avoid he or she accidentally 
you know, slang, you know, make it uh, because once you pass the P1, you are no longer able to make a acceleration, uh, you know, the 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 the, the uh, acceleration stop distance. Uh, then what you need to do is just continue uh, climb uh, and then make uh, 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 take off with one engine. Uh, continuous climb with a V2 speed, which is the engine Baylor speed, also known as V2, to make a positive climb. And obviously now you can't continue to fly to your destination if you want engine operative. Obviously after that, you need to start your emergency procedures in order to make a go around and perhaps land again uh, because your engines obviously failed. One engine uh, obviously failed. Okay. So I hope that makes a uh, uh, kind of like connections between this picture and that statement on the velocity. Um, if you have a questions, obviously we have the Torah session to discuss. Now let's look at the a little bit of the mathematics in this um, um, in this kind of like uh, takeoff performance. Okay. Now you obviously you have seen this one uh, already in terms of, uh, for example, like we discussed about the flight. Uh, you know. Uh, level flight that lift equals to weight uh, l equals w and your thrust uh, equals the drag now of course there is another um, another component of force in here which obviously that is related to the friction so i hope you still remember if you took a physics in a level uh, if you have like a box for example uh, on top of surface i hope that surface is you consider that so if this is flat, horizontal like that, this box, uh, this box have a mass m, and then pull by say a force f, then obviously there will be uh, frictions. Uh, uh, if you have that surface, uh, we call it a, a coefficient of frictions mu, then there will be a frictions force acting opposite of your force acting. Uh, you know, or you apply the force uh, f that is equals to mu times m times g, or in this case is obviously mu times w, right? So this is what happening here. So um, you have the component of frictions force uh, opposite to where they are kind of uh, motion, which is in that direction. Now at the same time here, you have the V, and then you have another one, which is your acceleration, because there is no if there is no acceleration, your aircraft will not move because it starts from zero, right? V equals zero. So you have to have an acceleration in order to bring the aircraft into a certain speed to pass the V1, to pass the V, uh, v, v rotate, uh, to pass the V lift off. And then uh, if you uh, go with one engine, there's a definition of V2 as well, right? Now, again, uh, we always go back to these equations, uh, Newton's second law, sigma f equals m dv dt, or if I just change slightly the equations, it will be dv divided by f, uh, f divided by m, and dt uh, multiplied by dt. Now, remember, uh, if you consider that is f equals ma, uh, then obviously f divided by m is obviously equals a. Here. So you got the A there. Then if you remember the, uh, the equations of uh, a physics, which I will show you later on on the blackboard, on the whiteboard, that is completely uh, compliance with what we learn in uh, A-level physics. Okay, so if you take this equation here, dV equals v F divided by M multiplied by dT to the next, and then we integrate that, uh, so if you integrate the left side, so dv integrate from say completely uh, stop a condition where v equals zero to a certain v, whatever v it is, we either p1 or p lift off. Later on, we will say okay if, if we consider that your aircraft take off at when the v already reach v lift off, then we could uh, uh, integrate that to to v lift off. So if you integrate that into from zero to v and integrate again zero. For, uh, from uh, f uh, divided by m dt from whatever the time takes to do that, then you have this uh, equation here, right? So I hope you understand. Well, dv integrate that become v because v well v minus uh, v zero and if you consider v zero, you started from zero because it's your aircraft uh, initially uh, at a stop 
uh, at a standstill condition, and then uh, f divided by m, uh, obviously, uh, um, well, uh, you integrate dt becomes t, uh, and obviously time, if you consider t at the beginning is t equals zero, then you have this equation, which is obviously you just manipulate the equation uh, by uh, swapping the t to the left side and then uh, make the v uh, to the other side. Right. So that is the your um, uh, um, first equations uh, that you got. And obviously, from the definition of ds dt, well, v obviously ds over dt, and then you make it like that, and ds equals v dt. And then you swap t here, dt here with that. Then, well, if you uh, um, uh, multiply that with well v uh, as a, well, obviously if I change that into v equals d f divided by m and I uh, completely change that t with that t f m then you got the s equals uh, if you integrate that s become well ds become s and then t d t become t squared divided by two right and then you got the f and the m there and then remember and we talk about that f divided by m or m divided by f is if you go back to initial condition of or initial equation of newton law then f divided by m or m uh, uh, divided by f is obviously uh well if i could just make it like that then that is obviously one over a right so that is the questions that you have. Now, the frictions uh, between tires and ground, remember that is actually the, uh, the box that we talked before, uh, but because the initial, the normal, uh, uh, well, the, the resultant of the forces in the vertical axis is basically L minus W or lift minus weight, then, uh, if we talk of, uh, or weight minus L, sorry, because we're talking about normal force acting in here. So if we talk about normal force acting in here, then if we call it as N, then N is basically uh, W divided by L other than uh, um, L divided by uh, W minus L, sorry. Then you got that R is equals mu times W minus l so if i then take this f as a resultant of forces which is drag minus uh, drag plus r then my equations is becomes that which is thrust minus d so you have thrust over there minus d well minus d plus r so in, in this case i kind of like uh, write it uh, in minus d minus r then where r is basically mu times W minus L, so you got the F in there. So if you take this F and then put it in the previous equations there, just so you uh, substitute the F with this F, then you got this uh, completely uh, as uh, equation. Okay. Now there is something uh, fishy here, uh, I would say. Because in here, I think for those of you who've done the uh, constraint analysis, I, I know that someone kind of like a bit confused about the accelerations that you need to take. Now in here, we have to make an assumptions or approximation in this case. Um, how? I'm just checking, I'm concerned about the time now, so uh, we still have some time. So uh, here, uh, why we have to make an approximation or assumptions? Because here, we uh, think that there is no acceleration because it looks like the acceleration is gone. Right? But in fact, it's not, it's completely gone. We, we talk about in real life, why it's not completely gone? Because in here, we assume that V, there's no acceleration because we thought that D is constant and lift is constant. But as you understand, lift and drag is a functions of, so if I just write it, lift is a functions of v as well as drag right so if you remember that half rho v square s c d or l rho v s s uh, s c l then then v 
if there is an acceleration, because in real life and real takeoff condition, your uh, your aircraft is actually actually accelerating. So the B is not a linear; is also is a, is part of the acceleration. So uh, for obvious reason, then we have to make a very good uh, ap approximations in, in here. So if I could just slightly change to the uh, uh, if I could just move it, is it? up there yeah that is the equations that you have uh in there now uh the ap approximations that we uh, uh we took here is that we consider that the field liftoff i think in more lecture note is also he also took this field liftoff is happens when it's about 1.2 v stall right what, uh, what is the fee stall and fee stall if you understand or agree that fee stall is uh, square root of 2w we already did this before so rho as cl maximum that's when your fee stall happened right so if you then uh, substitute into there then your fee lift off is basically um, uh, 1.2 square root of 2w rho s cl max you agree with that so if i then substitute this equation into sorry <laughs> into that equation then you got something like this i think sg uh 1.2 because it's square right so u square of this 1.2 square is 1.44 is that right 1.2 square uh and then because it's square root then you if you square it then you got your the square root the sign is disappear it's going to be rho s cl max right and uh you got like w still uh, divided by g there uh, from from that one and then you divide it by uh, 2 uh, t minus d minus mu minus uh, multiplied by w minus l that okay so uh, if you take this as a you know if you take this to the bottom right so then uh for example if i just make it with a different color if you i take that to the bottom there then you got t minus w so i, I lift that uh, uh i put it down down there t minus w the uh, so t divided by, uh, w uh, d divided by w the weight and this becomes one obviously later on and then this becomes l2 over w okay so if you take this 1.44 and then rho is the density but obviously if we try to make a different elevation then rho you could consider that as uh, uh, sigma is uh, rho density ratio remember that uh, sigma equals rho divided by rho zero then obviously uh, if you uh, if you consider that rho equals rho zero sigma then you got like rho zero but you have sigma there so if i could change that into rho zero and then you put sigma there because completely to change that rho becomes rho zero become two sigma you multiply this 1.44 if you take the g say equals to one so 9.9 uh, 9.81 or 9.806 meter per second square multiply by 1.44 so 1.44 divided by uh, one uh, 9.81 divided by 1.225 now because I want to uh, take that zero uh, row zero is 1.225 multiply by 2 and then T over W over there then you got a point or, or values of constant which is about 2. Point, oh sorry 0 0.24 something or 39 something right that is the constants right up there 0 0.239 which you probably have already uh, familiar with that if you uh, 
uh, look at most lecture notes, that is that, which is that one over there. Okay, so now you understand why we did that. Uh, in most lecture notes, you have to consider that values there with the sigma and the s, which is s is basically in our equation is somewhere there, but we move it over here. The s becomes your takeoff distance. Then take uh, tw, t over w, which is your thrust loading is moving to the left side. Okay, so I hope that kind of like give you a perspective what you have learned in most lecture note when you are calculating your takeoff with the one in uh, with the one that we looked at. Now, the liftoff that we could consider is uh, the V liftoff is either 1.2 feet uh, tall or we could also take 1.1 to 1.2 feet tall in this case. Okay, V liftoff. Okay, so uh, Right, so obviously, if you look at this equation here, there's a lot of factors uh, affecting your takeoff distance. Uh, first of all, is your, uh, I mentioned about the rule from the previous equations, your elevations. Now, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're taking off at Heathrow, it will be different, the ground that you require, compared to if you take, uh, take off at Tibet Airport, for example, with elevation about 4,000 uh, meters, right? So. Um, you need to consider that as well. And obviously, that's why the sigma in there, which is the density at your uh, at your uh, elevation, uh, runway elevation, divided by the sigma at sea level, sorry, the rho at sea level, right? So that is uh, affecting your takeoff distance. The second one is your weight. You see, that weight is very, very uh, uh, obvious there. The heavier your aircraft, the the, the, the longer S that you need, okay? So if you want to make your uh, runway shorter, well, not runway shorter, it, you will not make runway shorter because they're physical, but the, if you want to make your S shorter, the takeoff distance shorter, then obviously what you could do, one of the option is to make your aircraft slightly late, lighter, means that you don't take the full passenger. You could just prevent, like uh, uh, limit the number of passengers, for example, two thirds of your capacity, then you could make the, uh, the takeoff distance uh, shorter, right? So that is the, um, uh, the effect that you could uh, uh, receive from the weight aircraft. And in fact, that would affect your V1, V rotate, and v, uh, V2 as well, uh, subsequently. Of course, the wind, whether you have a tailwind or headwind, you know, obviously will affect your acceleration. And of course, the runway slope, whether your runway is completely flat or it make it a slope like that, or even slope positive or negative, that also obviously uh, will affect the uh, length of your ground run or your takeoff run. Okay. Now, of course, there's a equivalent to, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the different altitude or different elevation of runway that will make, uh, I think this is 1.7, right? So I don't know why the point is just goes up there. Uh, it should be down there. So one, it's equivalent to one over the sigma, which is the density ratio uh, to the power of 1.7. If you increase the weight, it's slightly uh, quite proportional to the uh, uh, square of that weight. So if you have like weight uh, heavier than uh, weight something lighter of your aircraft, then the takeoff distance will equivalent to the square root of that weight divided, uh, sorry, not square root, the square of that weight divided by the square of the uh, the lighter wind, okay? Right, so now obviously the wind, I'm not going to really go into detail, it's very obviously if you have a headwind, no wind or tailwind, that is going to affect that uh, runway distance as well. Okay, or uh, ground run distance or takeoff distance, okay? Right, so I'm going to stop here because kind of like running out of time, I'm going to slightly go into this uh, landing, I think it's a couple of slides about landing as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, slide. So I'm going to finish it off during the um, the uh, during the uh, tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions about this, but this is obviously, as I said, landing is uh, uh, the same as uh, uh, the, um, uh, the 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 assessment of that landing is the same as the the uh, the takeoff. So it's completely the opposite, but here. We have uh, three different stages, which is approach distance, the flare distance, the ground roll, and so on. But this, the, the, 
mathematics behind it is more or less the same as what we did actually uh, during Thicker. Okay, any questions on that? So hopefully uh, bring some idea of what actually the performance during takeoff that you need to look at 